Okay, here we go. Don't know who on the PC. <laughs> <laughs> Great start. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Patricia Miranda. I am the writer, editor, and the one of the main cast members of the podcast play, courtesy of Manic Expression, called Reflection. And we are doing a very special Q and A. And we have uh, a lot of the cast members here, so uh, I'll be introducing them. Uh, we have who played the role of uh, Miss McNeil. We have uh, Tia Ledesma, a.k.a. T. Kuhn. So welcome. Yo, what's up, everybody? Um, we have uh, the person who played as uh, Melanie, we, who is my younger sister. We have um, Aaron Collar, a.k.a. Jashikin. So welcome. Yo! Uh, we have the person who plays as my older sister, Judy. Uh, we have Megan Wessel, so welcome, Megan. <laughs> she even got a standing ovation. <laughs> so, um, hey, how's it going, Megan? Um, I think her screen is frozen, so... Uh, well, audio, I... No, it seems to be moving. Okay, good. Her audio's gone. Oh, her audio's gone. That's what it is. All right. Well, I'm sure that, she, um, she, you know, she'll come back to us. Um, we have the person who did the amazing, outstanding performance as the male dancer. We have uh, Patrick Woo! Dunn. Patrick. Hey. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and last but certainly not least, we have who uh, the younger version of Lucas, uh, who would be my uh, future husband, played by the amazing James Daniel Walsh. We have Jim Beffitt. Welcome, Jim. Woo. We could dig a boo, everybody. Yes, uh, the uh, the people who are missing from the cast are James Daniel Walsh, who played as the older Luke, and Emmy Walsh, his daughter, who played as the younger Josie, which is myself. Uh, unfortunately, they were not able to come, but they were so excited about it, and they send their regards. And uh, if you guys have any questions or comments about the podcast play Reflection, then please leave it in the chat, and we'll be able to answer it the best way that we can. So... Um, yeah, and uh, if you're wondering, this is just for the podcast play. This is not for anything else. This is not a regular Q&A for my channel or anything like that. So I see a lot of people, you know, asking questions about, like, that kind of stuff, so I'm sorry. Okay, so, um, yeah, so discussing about the audio play reflection. Um, now, I want to talk specifically to the likes of um, Jash and to Jim, because this is the first time that you've ever been um, casted in a podcast play for Manic Expression, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, Jash, you can. So, how was your experience like when doing the, the role of Melanie? I have helped out with voice work for someone else on Manic Expression, so this wasn't the first time someone's asked me to do voice work. Yeah, and I, was... think, I think I know what you're referring to. Uh, we actually did help with um, Mati Mali's, um, what was it, like, uh, Energy Core of Power, I think. And we also did a few, like, stories that he used to write. And uh, I think Megan was in there, too. I think you were Zombie Granny. Yes, yes, I was. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear yeah, you can hear Okay, you, okay. Zombie Just wanted granny. to make sure... And I was Ninja Girl, and uh, oh. which one were you, Josh? I forget. I think I played a role or two. I know I definitely had a fake ra Russian accent. <laughs> <laughs> Not as bad as my Chinese accent, where I actually had to speak Mandarin Chinese. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, that is... That, oh, that's, that's oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I mean, you have to speak too much, because, Patrick, you've actually been to China. Yeah, I yeah, I probably speak more than you do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anyway, I'm, I'm sorry, Josh. Continue. <laughs> it was this was just I had a longer script to look over, and I just read over the entire script before trying out my part, and then I sent, then I filmed, uh, recorded myself, and I. Took a few takes, and then I only sent in one. Just yeah. as some were probably more embarrassing than the others, and I was like, "What the what the hell was I doing?" <laughs> well, we to hear that you were great. Uh, I did really appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, Jane, uh, Jim, how about you? Um, I've done uh, I've done live readings before on some other podcasts, but those are most mostly 
you know, live, off the cuff, let whatever happens, happens, just have some fun with the flubs. This is the first time I've ever done, I guess you could say, a professional reading. So I admit I was a little uncertain about how well it would be received, but, you know, I tried to do what I could. I do remember um, when you first sent the script to me, the mistake I made, I accidentally read the uh, lines for older Luke instead of younger Lucas. Yeah, I, that was my fault because uh, for, uh, let's see, I think it was for Luke, I wanted to put in for adult, and then for Lucas, I wanted to put for the younger version. So it was that was my fault on my end. I actually put out <laughs> lines of James reading off the younger Lucas, and it's actually pretty funny because it just sounds like James. It doesn't yeah. make you pride no way in trying to make his voice younger. Um, yeah, I guess my voice is better suited for younger characters. I don't have that much of a vocal range, though. I have been working to expand it. Uh, let me know how this sounds. Now, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, 10 out of 10. You are correct, sir. Mayonnaise is an instrument. <laughs> yeah, for the one-handed tool. Oh. 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 naughty naughty i'm at least trying to behave all right i'm trying to keep this professional i'm trying yeah, to I, I was good. actually going to add on to I'm it tired. but i'm being professional here so i'm not saying anything I'm yeah tired. um so tikkun uh this is this was also your first time doing an audio play so what was your experience like like I was back in high school reading script lines all over again. <laughs> Did you do a lot of acting in school? Yeah. And um, so what was, uh, I mean, I, I, I didn't know what your vocal range was because, you know, back in, um, you know, when Manic Expression was just starting, there was like maybe like two or three women and I would, it was, it was either going to be Megan or myself. And if, like, for example, for um, for High Class Academy, there were three women, and I played all of them. So <laughs> I remember that you're pretty good in it. Oh, thank you very much. I tried my very best to change up my voice the best way that I could. I mean, I tried casting another person for Little Monsters, which was the play that Kevin and I wrote. Oh my God, that was a big mistake. I'm sorry, Sydney, if yeah, you're ever watching. Listen to that one too. Not bad. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I kind of regret doing that because uh, that was supposed to be like a a, a a cartoon pitch that Kevin and I wanted to do, but it ended up turning into an audio play. And looking back on it, it was a mistake. Like it, it should have been more um, animated and doing it like uh, that with you know, especially for monsters, it's kind of hard to interpret that in audio form. Yeah. So um, anyway, so now for the people who have been in audio plays. So uh, Megan, I believe you've been in like maybe two. You've been in, um, you were in Bloodshot and I'm not sure if you were in another one. So what was it like coming into doing Reflection? Um, it, it was pretty fun. Um, it had been a while since I had done one. I, I, had re, I had recently done like, a, I had revised my role for the Mason Dixon where I'm playing uh, the mother in that. So when I was doing reflection, it was it was quite fun. Um, I'm not sure if I did a good job with making my voice sound younger or not. I kind of have a monotone voice, so hopefully it worked. I think I just made it more high pitched, and I tried to not sound as monotone. But yeah, it was it was a lot of fun coming back for it. Yeah, it was, uh, and I I really did appreciate that you were able to make. Um, uh, I think that the way that the that Judy was performed in the in the flashbacks, you made her sound a little bit more understanding and a lot more sweeter. While yeah. in the later parts, with the exception of like when they meet up, like during the makeup room where Judy and Joe are talking about going with the wedding, uh, she's mostly kind of cold and reserved, and um, she feels like she's just trying to be her own self while yeah. at the same time just essentially um, just trying to do what's best for her family. Yeah. So I thought that you did a really good job on that. Oh, thank you. I'm yeah. glad I did. Uh, well, Patrick, even though that you only had two lines for my role, but you also did a few audio plays as well. You were in uh, uh, James's play. I think it was, um, if I, I forgot what the name was called. Um, Vows, was it, or? No, 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 it wasn't Vows, it was the other one where you got to play as, like, um, a, a time traveler? Well, that was, the thing is, it was very left open if it was time traveler or not. Um, we're going with just crazy guy. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was called. Uh, I I'll have to look it up, but, but no, yeah, I, I, think, I, um, think I think basically, um, uh, yeah. So you were actually like the main lead on that. So I know that you only had two lines, but what was it like coming back after like uh, been a while since you've been in a manic expression play? It's been a while since I've done anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I've been on a pretty long hiatus on that. Yeah. Uh, it was a little nerve wracking. Had to get back into the swing of things a lot of reluctance at first oh here it is it's called another time that's it yeah i, th I think i did another one for manic there was that another one i know i did a uh, final fantasy audio reading for mati oh yeah that's right you did that was interesting um yeah this is like Honestly, I was like, okay, I'm just going to look at the lines and then just kind of go with whatever it sounds like to me. And I was like, whatever. <laughs> this sounds real smooth. I'm going to sound sound like semi, like a, it's like a stripper really pretending to be a cop for a second. But you can tell like the innuendos were really obvious. <laughs> well, I, I made it so that was really obvious. Yeah. They were strippers. <laughs> what else? Apparently one of the ones in Vegas are more dignified. <laughs> <laughs> yes. At least I tried to. I mean, after all, with all this uh, YouTube thing about like not having certain, um, you know, things in, you know, otherwise you get your, you know, video demonetized. I tried my very best to do so. <laughs> but Shoot, I should have come then. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, okay, I do get a. I, I, we, okay, we do have a couple of questions. Uh, both of them uh, were asked by Norbert in Animation Bliss. Where did I come up? Okay, the first one is how did I come up with the story, and the second one was how did I come up with the characters. Okay, the story basically was about forgiveness and healing. I was going through severe depression, and I was just angry with myself, and I was just going through like so much. So it was essentially a metaphor of letting go of the past and moving forward towards the future. And um, basically, I, I think a wedding as like, you know, leaving like, you know, when you get married, you change your maiden name to your uh, to your husband's last name. And um, you start off a new life with the husband and wife. So it was sort of like a metaphor for that. And, you know, being confronted by your past by looking at your old stuff, and then seeing uh, Josie in the compact mirror is um, you know, I don't, I mean, I'm not going to say if it, if she actually did see, uh, Josie in the mirror, like I said, in the, um, the, like mentioned in the play, she was pretty hammered during the bachelorette party. So it could have been an illusion, but I mean, it's up to the audience's interpretation on whether she actually did see, uh, her younger self or, you know, she was reflecting herself when she was actually looking at her stuff for the first time in 20 years. Mm. And, um, yeah, basically it was just a story about forgiveness and healing and moving towards the next step in your life. And as for the characters, a lot of the characters, with the exception of the male stripper, were influenced by a lot of people. <laughs> Are you I'm sure the male lies. stripper was nice. influenced by someone? <laughs> no, nice. I, I, I just made the character up. Um, no. Essentially, Joe... Joe is basically me. Uh, the only thing that Joe isn't, uh, that I'm, Joe is that I'm not, is that, you know, she's a teacher and she's just really like cold. I mean, usually when I'm really depressed, I, I kind of like distance myself, but I'm not angry with anybody. But Joe and I have a lot of characteristics that we share. Like, for example, we both love history. We both love cooking, which you did hear in the scene, in the, you know, the background scene. We, we find music very comforting. And um, uh, that's pretty much it for the most part. Um, a lot of characters were influenced by like other people. Um, Melanie is very naive because she didn't grow up with such a harsh background. Um, and she's like, I kind of picture her as somebody who's like really beautiful and keeps her hair pretty and her you know, makeup on. I, I can imagine that she would be one of those people who goes on YouTube and looks up makeup kit, um, you know, tips. I have a lot of cousins who do that where they look up online about like, you know, how to fix your hair right and how to do like certain makeup. I have a lot of cousins who do that. Um, Judy is essentially like, um, 
you know, she's, you know, she's also a lot like uh, a lot of family members, like a lot of older cousins, or in some cases, even my, um, my, my sister, in which, you know, she's also gone, gone through a lot. And we, you know, at first we didn't have like a great relationship, but then when we got older and when we understood each other more, um, that's when we started getting along. And, um, Let's see, Lucas, um, you know, being kind of like this awkward kid and then eventually starting to warm up to people is essentially a mixture between my life and then Kevin's. Um, you know, Kevin and uh, was also like, you know, being incredibly supportive and being, um, you know, trying to help, um, you know, me out when I was uh, a kid because we've known each other since we were 10. And um, my mother uh, in the audio play is just, well, I mean, she's not inspired by mother. my mother. Just want to let you guys know that. Okay, good. But, <laughs> disclaimer. Yeah, disclaimer. She's not inspired by my mom. My mom is wonderful. Um, my, the, the mother is just essentially like, yeah, the mother is essentially like, what happens if um, the, you know, what happens if like you go completely, if you're, too overwhelmed with everything that's wrong in your life. Yeah. Like essentially like what if like for me like this it was like being like at the lowest point in my life. It's like everything going wrong. I just feel angry. I feel depressed. I feel like my life is not worth it. So it's essentially like the worst aspects of myself except that I'm not abusive. It's just mm -hmm. um it's just like the emotional part, not the physical part. And um yeah, that's pretty much it for the character. So thank so thank you so much for your questions. Now uh, I'd like to ask you guys, um, what kind of similarities or differences do you see with your characters? Mm -hmm. um, um, like I'm Lucas, hot. I was definitely. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't need to interrupt. No, I'm just saying I'm hot. That's about my reflection. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I agree. I mean, I'm, again, I'm, I'm just playing the script. You sold the part, man. You were hot. <laughs> yeah, your voice is just majestic. Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> oh, that, there's my part done. How about everybody else? <laughs> you were going to actually say something intelligent. <laughs> okay, so go ahead, Jim. Yeah, I was going to say that, kind of like Lucas, I was pretty shy, reserved, awkward kid took me a while to come out of my shell and I still don't think I've fully come out of it yet but yeah that definitely I do see a little similarities between the character and how I was as a kid and teenager yeah um how about you uh Josh okay oh, we're me and me and my character how do you pronounce her name <laughs> it's Melanie Melanie, sorry, I have like two or three different ways that I'll pronounce it. And like, I know. I, I even when Megan said Melanie, I was like, I don't care. I know. Oh, oops, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. it's I, 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 seriously, okay. I mean, I don't care. It's it, it, it's like with my name, for example. What do you call me? Do you call me Pat? Do you call me Trish? I'm like, I don't care. That girl who likes Nickelodeon. Yes, exactly. I do. <laughs> That's what I call her. I could have that was your critic name. <laughs> yeah. So me and Melanie are just. C really completely opposite. She's this bright and bubbly person, and I'm not. I have I suffer from clinical depression, anxiety of childhood. I've been jaded growing up just because uh, not great parents. Uh, I'm now living with uh, my emotionally abusive dad, and it's so it's like I'm not this nice, bright, and happy, you know carefree person that she is and uh, as you can see I don't really you know make myself up with makeup or watch beauty tips online <laughs> that's okay but I just this shirt was clean that's how I picked it out <laughs> <laughs> you're here I, again I feel I feel kind of out, out, out of the uh, norm with everyone else because again my character was a stripper uh, <laughs> Are you a stripper? What are you talking about? That's so related. Do you strip? It's not like very deep. <laughs> it's a very related. I, so I, I recently had a lot of confidence, but not that much confidence. <laughs> right. right. Um, how about you, Megan? How do you relate to Judy? Well, I feel like me and Judy are like in the sense that we care about our family and that we do anything to try to help them. 
Um, I would say that what makes this a little different, though, like when Judy kept on referring to her sister as Josephine, even though she re her sister repeatedly said, hey, don't call me that. If that was like me, I would have been respectful. I wouldn't have been calling her a name that she didn't like. Exactly. But aside uh, from that. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm saying like exactly. Yeah. But, you know, aside from that, I think Judy and I are alike in the sense that we care about our family. Um, we kind of keep to ourselves in a sense. She's, she comes across to me that she doesn't really express herself a lot. No. That she, that she kind of clams up when she's, you know, wanting to protect her emotions from people. Yeah, essentially, um, she just tries to focus on herself. Yeah. When I call Judy, she's essentially like... She wants to do good, but at the same time, she wants to help herself as well, which is why even though that when she was helping out Josie, at the same time, she was working really hard on getting good grades and um, being the best at her class so that she can just get out of there really quickly because she was just so unhappy with her life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the moment that she did have that taste of freedom, she basically just left and never looked back. And um, I try to create that kind of flaw in the character in a sense that we all have a limitation on which, yes, I want to help this person, but at the same time, I want to help myself out because I was never given any help before. Because, you know, yeah. she, she was the oldest, and she had to deal with an abusive mother and a father who was constantly working. Yeah. And so Get out. that had to be the case. Um, so that's basically how I wrote my, uh, that basically how I wrote Judy. And yeah. um, why does, you know, now I got a question about why does... Uh, uh, why does Josie hate being called Josephine? Um, the reason why is because she, w because her mother called her Josephine and it just like triggered like, uh, like emotion saying like, you know, please don't call me that. I don't, don't want to be reminded by my real name because it just triggered like a bad memory every time that she hears her real name. It's kind of like when I was younger and every time I got into trouble or like I was talked formally, I, I really hated being called Patricia. But um, as when I got older, I just accepted my name. I, I very rarely, with the exception of like friends and family, I get called Patty or Pat or anything like that. My uncle's has a similar situation to that. Um, his name is George, but uh, when his parents got divorced, his father, who, uh, you know, my grandfather, who I haven't really had a contact oh. with because he was a dick, he got remarried, had another son, and named him George. So my uncle saw that as a slight. So since his middle name was Murphy, he prefers to be called Murph. Yeah, it's sort of like that, in a sense. That's why she hates being called Josephine, because it triggered like those bad memories of her mother when she would scold her. Okay, yeah. Wow, that's kind of messed up. Yeah. Um, Cameron was asking about what was the inspiration for um, Josie's voice. Well, I think that's how Emmy talks. I don't think there was any inspiration to how um she spoke um like giving the character I, if only she was here i would ask her more questions about that but i think more or less that's how she talks and when i listened to her lines i said okay i want to see if i can be able to make my voice lighter so that i can try my very best to match up with josie so the way i'm talking right now is how i sound and then I basically like talk a little bit higher and try to match up to Jos Josie and see if I can do that. And that's basically what I did. I try my very best to sound like, okay, I want to be more consistent with how I sound and how Emmy sounded so that you can, um, you can kind of put your suspension of disbelief. It's like, okay, the way I sound would be like what um, Emmy would sound if she was, uh, if Josie was a kid. Yeah. So I basically worked around that. So I don't think there's any main inspiration for that uh, with why, how, you know, Josie speaks. Um, so, oh, uh, Norbert asks, since Josephine's mother has the same voice as Josephine as an adult, does that mean that younger Josephine's mother has the exact same voice as younger Josephine? I don't think so. If I were to cast a oh, younger... Yeah, I know it's exception. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 tried, I tried so hard find another person to play as the mother. Um, I got a hold of uh, Lauren Fox, AKA the cartoon physicist, but she was unavailable. And then I tried getting a hold of um, Lisbeth, who was the one who read T. Kuhn's poem on creative chaos. And she got a hold of me like a week after I posted reflection. I tried, to, I tried a whole bunch of other people, but they weren't responding. So I just basically played 
myself as the mother, except I made my voice a little bit lower and angrier. And if I had to choose on what would Josie sound like, uh, Josie's mom, if she was younger, I'd probably cast somebody else. Um, all right, so the question, okay, so we have another question. Um, did any of you guys have to re-record your lines because the they weren't acting well enough or something? Yes. No. Yeah, I had to, like, I would kind of flub a little bit or one of my cats would come into the room, so I'd have to, like, delete it and then re-record it again. <laughs> Be like an intense moment, and then meow, and it's like go away. <laughs> I love you, but not right I, now. Cats are always me. very intense. I yes, didn't have, I didn't have to re-record anything. I just edited out the stuff that wasn't supposed to be there, or as I generally put it, my own flubbing, which consists usually of a lot of swearing. Because <laughs> <laughs> so I know I'm messing up a line, I just let out a, a curse or something to just let that frustration out. So I. Very rarely give anyone an unedited line, an unedited line read because of that. Because of like, yeah, it'd be a lot longer and it'd be a few choice words in there. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother! I hear you loud and clear. Fuck I yeah. didn't have, I didn't have to re-record <laughs> anything. I did a few extra takes for ones where I flubbed a line or I gave the wrong emotion, but generally it helped. It helps that I'm on a night shift schedule and. I can record these at two in the morning when the rest of the world's asleep and you won't hear too much distracting noises outside. Yeah. Um, I had to re-record my lines like a million times because I flub a lot, especially when I'm trying to read even my own stuff. Um, I would be reading like, uh, you know, like, uh, don't call me that. Don't call me that. Don't call me that. So if I were to release my un Jojo un went un back a few years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, oh my god, like the puking thing. I probably did like maybe a minute's worth and um like i tried like variations of that and uh let's see other other things i had to do like the scream like uh you know when i saw the um, you know the the josie on the compact mirror for the first time i did like multiple screams i was like ah and then ah and then ah oh my god a rat <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, there was also the slap uh, I had to time the microphone just right like uh, you know sometimes I would like hit my like my uh, part of my arm or maybe like I miss it I hit the wall oh <laughs> ow and um, basically how I did the slap was that I extended my hand and I put it close to the microphone and then I just stretched it out and then I just like doing oh. that oh. and I had to like do that multiple times so that I can have like just something that's convincing. And then yeah. after like maybe five times, my hand hurts, and I was like, my hand is numb. Ouch. Oh, um, it did I, pay I off. The face. I gotta say, it's more effective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did pay off though, because I have to say the audio quality and production was very well. Helped make things very realistic. Oh, thank you. I, I, I must have gone through like hours upon hours looking for the best sound effects because uh, it was a combination of, um, you know, music from uh, Epidemic Sound because I'm part of Frederator. I do have access to like a bunch of music. Uh, I used some of that. Uh, I used uh, sound effects from YouTube, like doors and cars and the church bells and the clock ticking. And then eventually I did get permission from a lot of the people who are, um, you know, Manic Expression members like uh, Ichabod Todd and Les who did a lot of the music. And then um, Max Wiener and Leandra Rizzo also helped provide the music. Uh, for those who don't know, um, Max Wiener is the son of Mark Wiener from Wienerville. And wow. Leandra is, uh, for those who listen to War In Between, which is the weekly As Told by Ginger podcast that I did, uh, she appeared as a small small cameo role in As Told by Ginger thanks to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Ooh, nice. Cool. So nice. I got permission from them to, uh, you know, to see if I can I have access to their music and they were more than willing. With Max, I had to sign a contract because, you know, he's an independent musician and he does this, like, as a living. And, um, yeah, basically I just try to, like, sort through what music would fit well with the theme. And I just basically just chose... Uh, whatever song that I felt was best and just put it in there. 
And uh, yeah, basically, if I wanted to add or edit or delete audio, then, um, you know, I have to go like sort through that. And it was the very first time I've ever edited my own podcast play. I usually just give it to Creepy or uh, one of them was for Mark, aka Big Black Hat Man. But yeah, this was the first time I've ever done it. And it takes a lot of work. My God, it takes so much work to edit a play. Mm. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was going to make a comment about, you know, the whole slapping situation you mentioned earlier. Yeah. How much that hurt. I can, I can also tell you from experience of doing a fighting game, when you're doing the sound effects of like just punching going or getting hit or stuff, it is physically exhausting because at least the way I act, I'm very much like Mark Hamill. I move a little bit. So I am literally making, you know, the movements for being like, you know, punched in the gut or something and trying to make sure I have the right sound effect for it. It is a very physically exhausting process. <laughs> I can imagine some friends of mine do it. <laughs> yeah. The slapping thing made me think of uh, when I was still doing the web show and like one of the scenes was like fanfic critics slapping Susan across the face. So I had Archangel literally a few takes of her just slapping me across the face and it wasn't held back either. Oh, <laughs> like, God, my, no! my, my face was pretty oh, good after that. <laughs> You gotta suffer for your art. I yep. know. It's like it's gonna be a real slap. But we can't fake it. it. Has to be real. Right. God, I missed that show. Oh, I'm sorry, but eh, at least it's still on YouTube. Unless they took it down. Hopefully not. No, they didn't. Okay, good. Oh, okay. But hey, Megan, thanks a lot. Oh, you're welcome. Without but you, I wouldn't have known manic expression. So thanks. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad that you know about it. Woohoo! It's a great website. Everyone should go there. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I haven't been yes. on it for a while. <laughs> no offense, I just haven't gotten uh, one of those like, things. I, I need to be on there for a while because while I do post memes and such to the Facebook page, I'm supposed to also be doing the Tumblr, which I'll get to sometime this year, I promise. No, I don't it's so that. lonely posting. I like some company. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm alone while posting. Lonely. I'm so lonely. So lonely. lonely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we have a question for you. How many drafts of the script did you have to go through until you were satisfied? Um, I think about... Okay, so here's the thing. I've had this idea for a long time. In fact, the first person that I knew I wanted to have on the play was Emmy because I wanted to have her play uh, a younger version of the main character. And then uh, as time went on, I started writing uh, basically the main drafts of the play. Like I think the, the first thing, the first time that I wrote it, I had the school scene much longer because I wanted her to like teach the class. And then, you know, maybe the students will be kind of like talking in the background. And then that's when Miss McNeil came along. And I thought that that was just way too long and it, it just didn't really add anything. Um, another thing that I wanted to put in and I'm glad that I didn't because it would be so embarrassing. I, I, I Josie was actually trying to, um, there's a, there was a song from the eighties that Josie loved. And, you know, basically it was like that, that kind of, this, when listening to the song, it actually triggered um, Josie coming back through the compact mirror. And um it, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, basically, um, I wanted the, the play to be like 30 years as opposed to 20. I wanted the play to take place, like the flashbacks to take place around the 80s. And I wanted to feature like um, a song from the 80s that, you know, you know, Joe, when she listened back to it, it kind of like re recollected her memories. And then when Josie came along and then she's like, you know, you remember this song? And then we were supposed to sing it together. And I'm like, oh, my God, I, I'm glad that I cut that off because I would have been so so embarrassing. I'm sure you have a lovely singing voice. Yeah, I'm sure it's great. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not the best singer, but thank you, though. The song would have been Run With Us by Lisa Lougheed, which was in the intro and outro of an 80s cartoon called The Raccoons. Oh, God, I um, love that song. It's great. Um, I would have I would have probably sung that song alongside with Emmy 
but then I just cut the whole thing off because I didn't want to put that in. I also wanted to put a song in for Halcyon Days, which was my milestone birthday video when I turned 30. I also wanted to put in a song during the montage. Instead of the Azumanga Dayo theme song when I was like looking back on my stuff, I was supposed to sing This Used to Be My Playground by Madonna. Wow. <laughs> that would have been embarrassing because I'm not Madonna. <laughs> what the hell was that sound? Well, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, please don't make the vomiting sound. I, I've never joined in when someone's vomited, but I don't want to find I mean, out. I, I admit uh. that my singing would have been good, but I <laughs> you <for it>. <laughs> <laughs> I need sleep. <laughs> okay, go to sleep. Problem no. solved. No. <laughs> I was okay, told to be here, so I am here. All I'll right. sleep on air. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, okay, it's actually funny that you mentioned that because I actually did that. I think it was like a few years ago that um, it was Tim Deanna and I. We were doing like a long series of um, of podcasts about like you know what was the best um, movie of a certain year, and I think we did that until like 11 p.m. or midnight, and then we were just like talking stuff over skype and then until like three in the morning i was like knocked out and they were still talking and then when i woke up the next morning they were telling me like patricia you were fast asleep like around one in the morning i was like i was i had i did not remember a single thing of what happened hey it's oh. not the it's not the I most that. thing that's ever happened i mean dark side phil still holds that achievement oh no yeah. what Dark Side Phil once uh, got caught uh, spanking it during a live stream once. Yeah, I think I did hear about that. When was this? Why? Last year, I think. Oh, yeah, God. damn it! Oh, this isn't what it looks like. <laughs> I thought this was a joystick. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the porno <laughs> podcast. It was dried up. Get the fuck out! Get out! Oh, Get out! I want you out. <laughs> I don't care if it's too hot to play outside. You get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I know that some of you guys didn't listen to uh, Reflection, but I'm curious about what was your favorite moment from the play? I really enjoyed the flashback stuff. Like, getting to see how the East characters turned out the way they were. Like, seeing how Josie was, and then, you know, seeing how Judy used to be. And you can kind of understand why they are the way they are because of their mother. And how much stress they were both under. Yeah. I, I like the flashbacks. I like the flashbacks. I also like the bachelorette party. Oh, oh yes. That was oh, fun. Yeah. That was fun. Uh, yeah, the oh. bachelorette party was... Was a great, great part. You really got to see how uh, Joe, you know, how how not really into fun she is. That's the most polite phrasing I can think of at the moment. And you know how Don't much her bitch. sister is. I know. I wouldn't say bitch. Uh, yeah, it's a, I mean, she's hard Yeah, you, know, you saw her so strict and rigid, and then it was fun to see her make the attempt to loosen up. Yeah. yeah. Um, some people said that they really liked the way I sounded drunk. Yeah. Good. I, I was great. Trying to sound drunk was a lot of fun. Did you get drunk? Yeah, yeah, I did get drunk because in this in the play, um, you know, I was losing three games in a row and I had to take a shot every time my partner wouldn't answer a question correctly. So Josh was acting a little bit drunk, and then I acted the most drunk because my teammates sucked. And um, <laughs> well, I I I don't really know how I really sound drunk. Like I don't really get drunk that often. I'm very much of uh, if I go. Uh, out to eat with family, I might have some wine. Uh, I prefer beer, and it's always in social occasions. I, I, I mean, I drank the first time I drank absinthe. I thought these, some of the plushies I own were going to attack me, and I had to have Brian, you know, hide them. But I don't think I really sounded drunk. I love you. Uh, I love that, that would be a lot of fun if you were just to take a plushie doll's like. I know you're gonna attack me. Don't get any closer. <laughs> no, no, I, if, that, if, 
like that bear was that close to me, I would have just been in a ball of tears, like having a big panic attack. <laughs> like that, that, like that was the first time on absinthe. I am gonna lie. I gotta lie. I've never had that happen before. I mean, I was I've the only drunk. time. Like I've been, I drank absinthe since then. I've never thought something, some object was going to attack me. <laughs> It's always nice to know the floor is there for you, though. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the floor. Yeah, it's I don't really drink that much, to be quite honest. I mean, if there's, like, a special occasion, maybe there'll be some wine here and there. Or if, uh, if I were to go, like, if there's a place where they're testing wine, then, okay, I'll be fine with it. I've never been too crazy about, like, hard liquor. Uh, the reason why I did bring up the ginger whiskey was because I went to see Drunk Sh Drunken Shakespeare in New York with my friend Christina, and we drank some of that while drinking white wine while watching a bunch of people acting in Shakespeare, doing improv while getting themselves drunk. <laughs> oh, God. God. That was a lot of fun, though. I, I, I can I, imagine. But, yeah, when I tried to make a Mulaney sound drunk. I that took some practice because I'm like it's like slightly slurring. I'm like I don't know because I don't really sa I don't talk drunk and in slurs, and I don't need to be drunk to slur. So it's uh, that's just how I normally talk. So everybody's got to improvise somewhere, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I purposely made Judy not intoxicated because I knew she would get all the answers correctly anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Melanie would be like, "Oh, um, I want to drink anyway because I want to be the liveliness of the party or something." Yeah. That's what the atmosphere is for. That's where you get drunk. <laughs> all on that all. Right. <laughs> oh God. Um, let's see, uh, w um, what would happen after the events of Reflection? Would Josie and Lucas have a baby? I don't think so. I like to think that Josie, uh, and- Adopt. Luke Please, for the love of God, adopt. Mm, no, I don't think so. I think, uh, like- <laughs> I thought you said a dog. Get a cat. Get a cat. Yeah, maybe, a, maybe a pet. Get a dog. But I, I like to think that, um- <laughs> I'd like to think that maybe Josie or Joe would be like one of those people because she's a teacher and she's around by kids anyway. And maybe because of her experience, she thinks that maybe she can't be a good mother. I like to think that maybe she wouldn't be too crazy to have a kid. Maybe not anytime soon or possibly not even at all. I did, I did know this couple who uh, worked in a school and they were surrounded by a bunch of students and, you know, they would have them come over after school for like, after school studying or maybe for like dinner or something. And they didn't have any kids because they were just so busy and they would do a whole bunch of things. They would travel and they would hang out with each other more. I like to think that maybe Joe and Luke would do that because they always like to travel and do um, various activities, like to go to museums. They like to walk around in parks. Uh, um, you know, Joe has her book club and she loves learning how to cook. So I like to think that at the moment they're too busy to have kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They're gonna get a goldfish. For all you Gold. eager fans, they're gonna get a goldfish. Sure, <laughs> I, I kill only. Something. I kill <laughs> accidentally kill goldfishes within like maybe a week. Mm. Like, uh, beta fish. Well, that's why I it's a starting fish. Over you start here. with a goldfish and you work your way up. <laughs> I got a beta fish, and I can make that last nearly a year. But that's good. Fish. That's more yeah, than that's, I did. That's good. Yeah, that's more than I could have. I won a goldfish in a half in years. Part. And I think it died in like three days. So oh, good for you, Josh. No, no, I I did the beta fish, not a goldfish, for around a year. Ah, gotcha. gotcha. Goldfishes oh. are like damn. If you gave all of us like bags of you know those snacks called goldfish, you know that'd be good too. Ah, okay. Gotcha. That'd be Can't better. Go like a sling my people. Oh yeah. Hey, hey sorry, sorry, I have to do this, but I have to, I have to bow out. I have to get ready to go to work. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Thank you no, so much for coming no, in. no, Jim, don't leave me. I'll be the don't only faceless leave. person here. I'll be the only faceless person here. Don't leave, man. Don't if leave. it makes you anyway, feel better, I'll take away um, my face. Anyway, so, um, Jim, do you have anything to plug or self promote right before you head out? Um, yes, chapter nine of Power Rangers Helios is now up on Manic Expression. Um, hope, um, not, not really my best work, but I still try to make it enjoyable. So, hopefully, it is. Okay, so great. Please, check it out, yeah. people. 
thank you again for having me, Patty. It was great to be on the show and great to be a part of your play. Okay, thank you so much, Jim. I'll catch you later. Have Don't get one. lost. Bye. Don't right, get bye. Home. Bye, Jim. Bye. bye. All right. <laughs> Uh, so let's see. I'm sorry, um, T Kun. I forgot to uh, I forgot to ask you about what your favorite uh, scene of the the play was. Go ahead. Oh, it's okay. I'm easily forgettable. It's fine. <laughs> oh, don't say. Oh no, no, I'm the forgettable one. <laughs> animorphs never die. <laughs> no, they don't. I can yeah, make I random animorphs. I I outlined a uh, Game of Thrones fic that I'll uh, that I'll be getting to. And I made oh. some Animorphs references in the titles, which probably no one will get. <laughs> mm. it, was, it was fun for me. Yeah. That's nice. what matters at the end of the day. Yeah. So what was your favorite you scene of the play, Teku? Mm. Well, I actually really did enjoy um, the during the little flashbacks between uh, Lucas and Josie. They're just re they're, even though the scenes were small, they were just really cute. Yeah, basically, I, I I really wanted it to be a little bit longer, but I knew that I wanted to keep the main focus on why Joe was such a cold and distant person, the way that she was. And I like to think that Lucas was like one of the very few strands of not going too far into like complete dead like inside like i mean if maybe i would like to think that if maybe lucas wasn't in her life then she could have turned out just as bad as her mom yeah I, I, in fact i'd like to think that you know on, if you look in the if you look a little closer to these characters they almost they they're not exactly as um abusive or like um emotionally distressed as their mother but you do kind of see little hints that they did get some parts of it like uh, the way that Joe would be like really distant, similar to how when her the mother is, you know, off um, getting herself fixed and thinking that she doesn't need any help, or when she would just lay down for hours and just not speak to anybody. And as for like you know going away and not coming back and then not knowing what to do to help the family would be sort of like what Judy would be like in a sense in which you know she's distancing herself from everything else because she feels that sense of freedom and you know Judy is already married with kids and for the most part when she's home you know it, it, I like to think that maybe the dad's mostly trying to take care of the kids the best way that he can and uh, I like to think that maybe the dad you know also used to work in like uh, like a television company or maybe like a movie company which is where like maybe uh, where Judy was like getting her internship and doing documentaries and stuff where she gets to travel around the world. Then maybe when they met and then eventually when they did have kids, like, you know, they would do, do a little bit of traveling over the years, but then as time went on, when the kids started getting older, you know, Judy wants to do more of the traveling and then he pretty much became a stay at home dad. I like to think that maybe the kids grew up like, you know, sort of like a little bit distant towards their mother. Like they wouldn't know what to think of her, to be quite honest. And I like to think that maybe something similar that you know Judy went through when she, you know she was with her mother. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as for the name Mucus Lucas, um, I just did it because it, it it rhymed, and I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah, I thought it worked. I yeah, can see kids I mean, calling him that. He has a runny nose. Let's call him Lucas the, Lucas. All the nicknames I've had in my life, that was tamed. Yeah. <laughs> Megan well, Weasels. Um, so I never... I didn't really have bullies. What was it? Teabag. Oh. Ooh. God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, don't worry. It wasn't for anything perverted or anything. They just was like... They just know I always carried a heavy bag around. On me and my name started with a T. That ah. was it. Okay. Well, that, I that was. That <laughs> okay. I was like, like that could have gone so much worse. Yeah. yeah. Either that or maybe they were just huge Prison Break fans. Yeah. <laughs> there was a character named Teabag. I used to be called mm -hmm. Snap Trap because of my braces. They had these rubber bands that they would put like on the front and the back, and if I opened my mouth too much, it would snap. So they called me Snap Trap. They called me Catwoman because I would hiss at people. I was, oh, yeah, I was called Cat Lady too. 
I was given the nick- given the nickname um, encyclopedia, and not in a good way. Because I knew uh, everything and I was the teacher's pet. They called me that, but it wasn't a compliment. It was an insult. I, yeah. Aren't kids fun? Yeah. Basically, I was because of the end of a teacher's life. I hope he's doing okay. <laughs> yeah, basically, um, with, um, n- you know, basically nicknames uh, that are insulting to people. And, you know, I was teased a lot as a kid, so essentially with my teasing kind of like tr- turned into uh, Lucas about how he was feeling in a sense that on the outside, he looked like some nerdy kid who constantly had his nose running and he wasn't exactly a cool person to be seen with. But when you got to know him more, he uh, he was a really nice guy. He's just gone through a lot of things. Like, you know, his father was really overprotective of him and he didn't have a lot of family members. So I thought that this would be a nice way to have... Um, you know, with Josie, who has issues with her mom, and then uh, Luke, uh, who basically has little to no family members, and he's, like, over-smothered, basically, like, come together, and they were able to have a nice connection towards each other. They had a lot in common, but they were able to help each other. Hmm. Hmm. Story gets deeper and deeper. Yeah, I, I, I've also been, there was also another question about, sh- should I continue with reflection? I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking about whether I wanted to continue with reflection. Maybe I can focus on another character. Um, I've been thinking about, like, maybe I would take it place, like, maybe after the wedding. And maybe something's wrong with the mother, like, during her stay in Shore Valley Hospital. And maybe they start... Um, you know, maybe Joe confronts her mother for the first time in many years, and she's wondering what to say or what to do. Um, and there's uh, also there's a bunch of other characters I can focus on. Like maybe I can do one on Melanie or Judy or Luke. Uh, I can focus on the Witty Brothers, which I I think that I wanted to write a story about the Witty Brothers. Um, you know, with them struggling with uh, Miss Anderson's class. So yeah, um, as for mm, as for another story, maybe some other time, but. In the meantime, I just want to focus on my other works right before I dive back into doing audio plays. Um, right now, I'm editing Creepy's um, Mason Dixon play because he's way too busy. And um, I also recorded for T. Coon's podcast play, which uh, that should be a lot of fun. So, uh, you okay, T. Coon? Why, lady? Why must you enter now? <laughs> Who are you talking to? My mother. Okay. Was your mother a dog? <laughs> or a yes. What you the didn't hell? do your chores. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you my mother are, is a dog. Now you sit there and be good. Go to your room with no supper. <laughs> I'm sorry, there was like this growling noise from <laughs> yes, someone's <like>, audio. <laughs> was it mine? Because my cats don't growl, that or at least not like that. Laundry. Oh, I was going to say, was it the car outside my window? Because that was. No, was... <laughs> oh, maybe. Yeah. That was her dragging in the laundry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or we're, we're about to be one of those. Uh, TV movies where we're getting killed off during this podcast. Oh, unfriend, uh, not, <laughs> yeah. would it be unfriended? That, yes. You know, yeah, that. Yeah. Mm, oh, that Am I gonna go down with the blunder? Well, you all have to survive on your own. <laughs> it's okay. I, I always you know, survive, survive no on my out. own. Anyways, I have no one here for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, never is. Yeah. I know. Anyway, so <laughs> anyway, I think that's um, I I think we can start wrapping things up. So um, final oh, word. I think we'll have a discussion about the fate of the strippers after the bachelorette party. <laughs> yes, that should oh, be the a po- sequel. <laughs> yeah, do a podcast play called The Stripper. <laughs> <laughs> Cocaine overdose found in a ditch. Journey of the life of a stripper. Yeah. This sounds like something creepy, might right? It goes to self. Talk to Creepy about this and see if he'd be interested. Oh, he probably would be. He'll he'll be there with bells and whistles. I can imagine. What will the the bells and whistles be used for? (laughs) 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 I like the the character he plays a vampire. It's interesting. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, he's the only grown in the group. Don't give me that that, look. So. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, uh, let's see. If I were to write another, let's see. What would the stripper be doing after reflection? Um. <laughs> You would go over There's to- There's a lot of weird shit going on in Vegas. You could take something from that. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm moving out of this small town of Webb Creek. I'm going to the big leagues now. Vegas, here I come. <laughs> yes, he that's gets to join the guys from down under. Hi, mate. Welcome to Australia. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What? They're a really good show. <laughs> then go eat my baby. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, no, if I would not turn reflection into a movie, um, it would probably be a lot longer and complicated. I mean, if anything, um, I would like to flesh out the story more, and maybe I can have it in comic book form or graphic novel. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, that would work. Um, less studio yeah. interference. Yeah, less studio interference, right? And besides, I, if I were to do a movie, I would pretty much do it with like little to no budget. Uh, I wouldn't have anybody with me. Oh, the Sam Raimi method. Yes, exactly. The Sam or Raimi like a silent film. Your... No, Sam Raimi uh, nearly killing his cast in the first Evil Dead movie. Maybe you could follow up suit. Yes, and exactly. They came back. So they yeah. came back for the show. <laughs> I was one, you see Joe laying down in the cold floor by the teacher's lounge. Miss McNeil comes by and wonders, what happened? Well, this I'll take over as history teacher now. This is, this is either the beginning of a murder mystery or a porno. <laughs> oh! Both, 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 both. Comment session, say both. <laughs> <laughs> we are horrible people. I know. <laughs> I, I'm friends with creepy. That should tell you anyone listening to this enough. <laughs> well, no, no, seriously. I, I just want to thank you guys so much for being a part of this, whether it be a small part or a big part. Uh, I put a lot of work into the play, and I'm glad that at least in some parts that you were a part of it. So it's not m just my play. It's all of you guys' play, and I hope that... Um, you know, it, it, it meant something to you. Oh, it did. It was a great, great project to work on. I would love to be a part of it again if you were to continue it. I'm oh, I, I definitely am thinking about continuing it. That's for sure. I'm but glad only I can send in recordings now. Yes, I will be back. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll definitely have some more stuff in the school. Yes. If I do I have a focus on the Witty Brothers. Yes. Do I have to be the nice teacher again? Um... Sure, I guess so. I mean, maybe you can throw maybe like a, a ping, like a detention slip or two. Sure, I'll let you do that. Oh, yeah, funny, funny. You have your hall pass. <laughs> <laughs> Get in. Don't Get walking in around your cell phone in the halls. It doesn't that help? I just watched Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that if I see you, really Brett, one more tight end in the hallway, I swear to God, I am going to bring out the wooden bat. <laughs> You were in that bathroom for 20 minutes. What this, were you doing the in there? The is very, it really is divulging to some kind of thing, though. It's kind of hilarious. So just, I'm, I'm being it's, it's not helpful because I'm the killer. The script, so. Yeah. I'm going to be silent, the killer that's always in the background that no one takes notice of or thinks is important until they kill you. Well, this is the last thing they see are a pair of Eevee eyes. <laughs> oh, oh, hang on, hang on. Uh, look at it. Hey, me, Valivi! She has her own show character right there! Hey, hey, me, Valivi! I'm going to fuck you up! <laughs> you know, it's been a while since the last time I had Evie me. Get over here! <laughs> oh, fuck it. But yeah, I do that. I've been doing that in, um, with extra happy. Like, for somehow this hat has evolved its own character. <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah, is there any final words uh, wish regarding wish our wish reflection wish. that you'd like to say right before we end this? I should probably oh. listen to it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Tycoon, what do you have to say? Just happy for once that someone actually said my last name right. After 14 years, someone said my last name right. What's your last name? Ladesma. 
Lebesma, fuck. <laughs> but how it's but how it's it for, how it's spelled how, how I how it's oh spelled in the um in the credits is not actually how it's actually spelled um how it's supposed to be right. I'll probably have to change it. Yeah. You actually no. pronounced my last name incorrectly. I just didn't say anything. <laughs> At least your name never gets pronounced like Laquisha or Ladisha or Lamishka. Okay. Do Weasels. I look fucking Russian to you? <laughs> Maybe. I look very Russian. All right. Do not. Uh, you're not in. The, you're not in so Russian heritage. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not. It's not easy having uh, a first name and a. La uh, uh, it's not easy having a first name as a last name. It's like, oh, nice to meet you, Miranda. It's like, no, Miranda's my last name. My name is Patricia. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. And then I get Patricia uh, or Miranda pronounced incorrectly. Some people call me like, one person called me Tish. And I'm like, I'm like what? Yeah, somebody called me Tish when I was in college. I, I, oh, how did I get that? I have no idea. Hi, hi Tish. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the only. I've heard that. I'll never give someone that name. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, but um, no. Uh, anyway, uh, going back to the sentimental thing again. So no, it's sorry. I'm, I'm, no. Just, I'm just really happy that you guys were a part of it, and I'm hoping that sometime in the future I can have you in other another play or just a continuation of this one. Yeah, I don't have a life. It's gonna be too hard. <laughs> I might be having more of a life when I move, but that will be you know much added to it. Yeah, I'm all Would you bored. mind if I borrow a name from yours? Yeah, sure. What do you, what do you need to borrow? Oh, just just a just a character's name to use as like a cameo for a side story. Yeah, absolutely. You can uh, borrow as much as you want. I mean, who knows? Maybe uh, somebody was asking about will you ever do a crossover with another podcast play? It's like I don't know. That would be kind of difficult. Like, what podcast play can I cross it over with? It would be really um, dark if I put it with Bloodshot. And um, <laughs> don't do it with the one I'm doing right now. I'm okay. feeling another time may not work. No, another time wouldn't work. <laughs> Afterlife wouldn't work because uh, everybody would be dead. Um, that works. You'd, get, you'd have the whole play them walking over other corpses. It sounds perfect. <laughs> reflections. Yeah. The Don't Walking the Dead. Reflections with zombies. Just like Pride and Prejudice with zombies. Oh, yeah, exactly. Movie. Um, even with my own plays, that would be kind of weird. I don't think that reflection would work with little monsters. I guess high class academy would kind of work, but seeing everybody in etiquette school would just be kind of boring after a while because they don't have etiquette problems. Um, it could be something that Joe graduated from or took for a while. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, if she wanted to enhance her sophisticated skills, that could, could be a possibility. But no, uh, I think that if I were to do another play, it would probably be like, I don't know, maybe a different play or just uh, something along the lines of that. But yeah, I think that for the most part, um, uh, I just want to take a break from the audio plays for a little bit and focus on some other stuff. I do have a story that I've been wanting to do for a while, but um, I, I don't want to say too much in detail of that. And um, if, uh, oh, Norbert's asking if I was to ever do another podcast play, can followers like me play a character in it? Um, with Manic Expression podcast plays, it's usually like with uh, members for Anybody Manic Expression, suffering? but... Um, but I guess um, if I were ever to do a podcast play just for Old School Lane, and if I want to have my followers like do auditions or something like that, I could maybe consider it. But I was just doing this play. No. But, you know, who knows? Maybe I can do something like this in the future. All right. Uh, I think that's it. If you guys have any final words, then... Um, you know, you can uh, plug yourself, promote your stuff. So, uh, Jashikins, what do you got coming up? Okay. Uh, there's, of course, my main blog, jashikins.blogspot.com, where you can find nearly everything. I'm doing dramatic readings on my YouTube channel, Jash Reads, and uh, the current thing I'm working on is Animorphs number three, The Encounter. Oh, nice. So, it's, so yeah, I've practiced voice work over there. <laughs> 
Uh, All right. Um, Patrick, uh, what do you got going on that's not being a male stripper? <laughs> what is it? I thought that stripper. was his entire life. I thought he, like, maybe took a shit and the rest was he was a stripper. Uh, I second that story. Right now, I'm in talks with a friend of mine to do an actual lore video for Monster Hunter because, good lord, while Dark Souls has a ton of them, Monster Hunter is none. Wow. And, and honestly, they're very similar in lore and the way they do lore. Um, I'm also. That, that's all him. When any information comes out of that, it's all him. I just said, I'm just trying to help as of right now. I don't know what's going on. All right. Well, I wish you and Tim the best of luck with that. Uh, whether you our guys are doing something cinematic or bringing back Tim Deanna reviews, whatever in that case is, I, I wish you guys the best of luck and also for your voiceover stuff. Thanks. Um, Megan, what do you got? Um, well, I don't update it too, too often, but I do have the Fanfic Critic vlog on my YouTube channel. Not the old Fanfic Critic channel. It's a new channel called uh, under the name of Ryoko368. Uh, so if you guys want to check that out, um, you can. I'll probably post the link on my Facebook at some point. But That's aside sub. from... Sub. Uh, uh, aside from that, um, not really much going on. So, um, yeah. All right. Uh, okay. What do you got going on, t -Kun? Okay, I'll let her finish. I got one more thing I just remembered. Oh, uh, go ahead, Patrick. Oh, uh, just one small, very irrelevant thing. I have um for anyone that's really into like Pathfinder RPG, I have been slowly, very slowly working on a campaign setting. Um, and I mean like <gasps> like snail's crawl, but it's been going on. If anyone's interested in get, taking a look at it. I guess I'll uh, let Patricia know, and I can try to send the link over to her. And it's a, it's work in progress right now. I'm still haven't finished it. That's okay. I, I, like I, I'll put all of your stuff in the description box for people to check out your stuff. Okay. Uh, T Coon, what do you got? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Any mm. upcoming poems that you're writing? Uh, I'm good up until the 14th. Actually, I've been kind of going through a motion drive right lately okay and i know that you have an upcoming project uh would you like to share any information on that no no okay that's perfectly fine um, um otherwise uh, uh i have a uh, uh let's see here uh, i do have something for uh, the paint a paint paint a picture series though for uh thomas's cole's work so if anyone's actually <laughs> interested in seeing what can come from that you can check those out over at manic expression or on my deviant art page um a card odd one if you like and if you like to uh subscribe for my channel just to hang out and chat with me i go by t thomas on this side just look for the evil demon goat icon all right um, let's see. As for me, um, uh, you probably already know who I am because this is my channel. But uh, for those no, who are you, are you? yeah, who, who, are? who are you really? <laughs> I don't know who I am? I like That's to change my identity every week. <laughs> but you no, said uh, it yourself. You, you go by many names. How do we know? Doctor, hack onto my feed. Like, hey, there's a guy. Let's uh, let's use him. <laughs> exactly. Um, no, but seriously, uh, I just uh, uh, by the time that I finish doing this uh, um, live stream Q and A, I have a lot of editing to do because I'm going to be posting up the last episode of War in Between, and then afterwards, I do have an episode of Casual Chats that I have to edit up that I recorded back in December. For those who are a part of it, I'm sorry I didn't post it since then. And uh, let's see. After that, I have uh, I have a video script to work on that I've been wanting to do for a long time, and it's going to take me a bit. But uh, I'm hoping that the wait will be worth it, even though it's almost April. So, yeah, I, I think that we can wrap things up. I don't think anybody else in the chat has any other questions. So, um, guys, once again, thank you so much for coming on by. I really do appreciate it. You're I have nothing else thank to do. You're welcome. Yeah, it was great. Thank. Yeah, uh, you're welcome. I like right. being my mom on the edge without sleep. <laughs> Thanks. She's entertaining. Me. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you kindly. So if you guys want to check out their work, I'll leave all of their stuff in the description box below. If you have not seen Reflection and you're wondering, what is this about? Why aren't you talking about Nickelodeon stuff? So I'll leave a, a link to Reflection on the annotation and uh, you can listen to that and then you can find out what exactly we were talking about over the past hour and a half. And... Uh, yeah, that should be it, everybody. If there's any uh, updates regarding about a new podcast play, I'll definitely let you know. But in the time being, I have to edit Creepy's uh, podcast play, and then who knows what will be next for me. I do have a few projects that are up in the air that I have to work on. So, And I can't uh, yeah. say much for mine either. I'm still waiting for voices, so I can't yeah. say much on that. Yeah, I can't say too much on that project, but I am in it, and I'm really looking forward to the final results. I'll definitely put it on the Manic Expression podcast play playlist that I created a few days ago when James started uploading all the old Manic Expression plays uh, during Manic Month. So um, Really? Oh, cool. Yeah, he has been. Um, yeah, every day for the past month, he's been uploading like the, the old podcast plays we used to do on his YouTube channel. Um, I'm in at least five of them. And talk um, to yourself at least once. No, I talk to myself at least twice. Because in High Class Academy, I uh, I was an old woman, Marge, and then I was Miss Wentworth, and I talked to myself as Tina. So basically, there was this one scene in which I basically talk like this, and I was very, very uh -huh. concerned about that. I, I sounded like that. And then I basically did my crappy impression of Julia Child for another character. And then I was talking to another character who sounds like me. So I basically talked to myself at least a couple of times. But yeah, you'll be hearing that uh, in High Class Academy. Vows, um, I was a stripper. Like giving me lady, I don't approve it. Stop it. Stripper? Oh, yes. will, will that stripper ever meet up with Patrick's character? The fan yeah, do a, <laughs> a crossover fanfic. The two strippers unite. <laughs> well, let's see. That's James's play and my play. So yeah, you know what? We could put vows and reflection together. Um, so yeah, I play a stripper and stripper, Dawn of the Gigolo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's for vows in High Class Academy. I play like three characters. Little Monsters, I played two characters. I was a nasally nerdy geek, and then I played um, one of the teachers over there, and then I played another character. And then for Mason Dixon, which is Creepy's, um, the only Manic Expression podcast uh, play that is like an ongoing series, uh, I play as Kate Dixon, who is the wife of um, Keith Mason. And uh, Megan is there as well, as she plays uh, Granny Mason. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And is that your review? <laughs> yes, burp out of ten. I give yeah. this review a burp. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, damn, um, so does good. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you can you, yeah just go to the playlist and check out all the other stuff that we've done over the years, and uh, check out these guys' work too because they're incredible and they're uh, they they need more recognition. I I love them dearly. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not professional. I can't. It's not in my blood. I don't care. I don't care what you guys are. I mean, we've known each other on and off for a couple of years. I mean, for some of you guys, I've known you since like we, you know, since Manic Expression was pretty much started. So it's nice to know that we can like still come together as like good friends and just chat and crap, whatever. I've been on the site well, for five years. This is the first time I've been any of you. Come crap with me. Come. <laughs> something about that dirty bomb on your house. Every time I try to be all sentimental, it just turns around. <laughs> it, it, I'm sorry. It's my defense mechanism. If I start to be sentimental, I might tear up or something, and I... I it's like protective. an RPG. Wait, I'm trying to deflect it. <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, try casting five points. We're de deflecting sentimental um, emotions. All right. Quick, roll the dice. What do you get? Patrick, what did you get? Roll the dice quickly. <laughs> Shit, natural one. Oh my God. I, got I got a... I got seven. I got optimistic three. <laughs> we're fucked. I got apathy <laughs> of natural 20. Oh yeah, we're fucked. <laughs> All right, well, that's it, everybody. So take care and have yourself a good evening. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.